Good morning, everybody. So today's sharing is um, about how to reset in 21 days. Okay. So first of all, you know, these are the three components I'll be talking about. And I'd like to thank Sister Sing Ting for inviting me to share with everybody today. Okay. So before the diet, let me do a little bit of self-introduction. I started as a volunteer in Sizi in 2009. And at that point in time, I wasn't vegetarian yet. And I was a bit of a, I was quite hesitant to adopt the vegetarian diet because of certain preconceptions. Huh? And then in 2016, I joined Sizi Great Love Preschool as a principal. We opened two centers uh, by now. Okay, The first center was opened in 2014. And then uh, I joined as principal in 2016. Then in 2020, we opened our second center. I now over two, oversee two centers. I don't just, um, I'm not the principal anymore. Okay. So this was my diet before the healthy 21 day challenge diet. Okay. I love bubble tea. Cannot, cannot, cannot do without it. Okay. I love mala hot pot. Okay. So for some of us who are not uh, familiar with mala hot pot. Basically, it's an array of ingredients that you can pick and then um, they fry it for you with spicy and numbing sauce. Okay, it's full fat, full oil. Okay, looks very delicious because it is, uh, okay. And then pizza and carrot sticks. I'm, um, I'm vegetarian, not vegan. Okay, so you can see it's a... Uh, Full fat, full sugar, full, full, full everything, okay? Full of things that are not good for me. And then, of course, I cannot do without coffee. So this was my diet before the Healthy 21 Day Challenge. And I'm the kind of person, if you tell me, no, don't do it, all the more I want to do it. So if you tell me, don't drink bubble tea, it's not good for you, I will drink bubble tea on that day. That's how my body works. <laughs> so, you know, I need to be, uh, I, I need to be motivated a okay, strong motivated. And before the 21 day diet, I thought, you know, it's too healthy for me. I cannot. It's too healthy. And it's just green vegetables on green vegetables on green vegetables. Everything is going to taste very green. Not ready for it. And I need chili sauce. I need chili on everything. If it's too green, I'm going to need chili for everything. Okay. Everything needs to be full fat, full sugar. I need full flavor. I cannot. I really simply cannot embark on this healthy 21-day diet. It's just too healthy for me. So as I said, I need some motivation. Okay, A lot of people who see me say, oh, you know, you don't need to lose weight because you look so uh, slim already, you know. But I weigh myself every day and then I realize there, there is a problem. Okay, there's this thing called skinny fat. I'm sure if this is a, a term that many people are familiar with. Okay, and I have colleagues. My colleagues uh, were my biggest motivation. I'll share some of my colleagues with you later. Okay, and under their encouragement and of course companionship, uh, I decided to, to give myself a chance. Okay, because one of my colleagues said, well, if you feel that this diet is too clean for you, you add your own chili sauce. La. Add your own. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, nobody's going to judge me. I'm going to just go ahead and try it. Okay, so one of the biggest motivations, because I'm quite a um, sedimentary person, was that our preschool was one of the collection points for this healthy 21-day diet. Okay. If at any point of time anybody has a question, please go ahead and, you know, please turn on your mic and ask, okay? So during the diet, this is what has been served, okay? You can see, oh, so colorful, okay? This is, I'm sure, something that many of us have, have heard a lot, okay? So colorful, looks so delicious. There's proteins, there is uh, fruit. There's complex carbs. Wow, it looks so good, right? But I'm not a rice person. <sighs> Eating rice 
is very demotivating. <laughs> yeah, so you can see out of these many pictures, there's only one non rice. There's only one bihun, purple bihun, right in the middle. Okay. So every day is rice. Now, on day one, lunch, I was like full of excitement. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to go and enjoy this. So I opened the box. Wow, so nice. And I smell it. Okay. Mm. I'm not sure. Okay, so, you know, I, but the self-doubt came. And, but since the food is already in front of me, I said, okay, let's go here and try it. I was like, oh, okay. Green vegetables taste like green vegetables. Carrots taste like carrots. Broccoli tastes like broccoli. Oh, everything tastes like what it's supposed to taste. And then I, I told my colleague who was sitting beside me, um, yeah, everything tastes like what it's supposed to taste. So she looked at me and she said, yeah, what do you expect it to taste? Do you expect like green vegetable to taste like potatoes? Do you expect carrots to taste like broccoli? What do you expect? I was like, oh, okay, okay. All right, so I know what to expect now. Food tastes like what it's supposed to taste. And it made me realize, you know, I'm so used to eating full fat, full sugar, full of things that are not good for me. I'm not sure what food tastes like anymore. And I realized the portion was just so big that it put me off. One big portion of rice, so many portions of vegetables, one portion of protein. I was like, you know, I... It was just so much. So after eating lunch at 11.30 at that time, I was like, okay, I think I'm very full now. I cannot, I cannot eat anymore. Then when dinner came at 5.30, I was like, huh? It's time to eat again? But I'm not even hungry yet. But since the food has been put right in front of me, I was like, okay, let's eat. So I ate and I ate, and I realized, oh, this is never ending. There's so much chewing. I feel like a horse, you know? You see how horses and cows, they chew their food when they, 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 when they eat, right? And I was like, oh, I feel, really feel like a horse or a cow. I chew until my mouth is tired, you know? So after day one, I was like, okay, this is just too much food for me. So the second day, I told my colleagues, can you all please help me to eat some? Okay, I can finish lunch on my own, but can you please help me with some of the dinner? So, you know, I'll share some, I'll share half the rice and most of the vegetables. And then I ate, okay, day two, not so bad, okay? Day two, I managed to do it. Then day three, and then day four, and there were days that there were things like brinjal, which I absolutely cannot make myself eat. And then there were many days with capsicum. Oh, capsicums are the bane of my life. I don't like capsicums. But I did not say, oh, I don't want to eat capsicums. I just looked at the colleague beside me and said, can you rescue me? I don't say I don't eat it. I just said, you know, can you rescue me? So they understand. And, you know, she took some of the, the capsicum and then she took some of the uh, brinjal and then I could manage eating a lot of it. Okay, so every day was the same routine. I would finish lunch on my own. And then for dinner, they, my colleagues would help me with some of the rice and some of the vegetables. Okay, so gradually I managed to accept whatever has been put in front of me. And then I would eat and eat and eat and eat. Okay, I would just eat the yummy food in front of me. And I, I gradually accepted that, you know, Black-eyed peas taste really good. And I don't need so much oil. I don't need so much salt in my food. I actually can manage the entire month without chili sauce. And I can manage the entire month with this very delicious diet. It is not terrible. I really enjoyed myself towards the end of this diet. I was quite sad that, you know, it, um, it had to end what I felt was very quickly. Okay, so everybody can see my 21-day tracker. You can see that I track the meals that I have. I try to track my sleep. 
I, I definitely track my exercise and I track my weight, the fat and my skeletal muscle. Okay. So you see, I weighed, I started the diet at 55.6 kilos. And towards the end of the diet, uh, well, the end of the month, lah, okay, I lost three kilos of fat. All right, because my skeletal muscle remained the same. Basically, you know, I didn't gain a lot of muscle mass because I didn't exercise. So just from eating, I lost three kilos of fat. Good job. I told myself, yeah, worth it. But uh, the other changes that I made were also, you know, my diet, my what I ate for breakfast. And you can see there was there's this big blank part between the 11th to the 15th that I didn't have good. I didn't have the healthy 21 day diet for uh, lunch and dinner. Okay, this was this is because the meals were sent. We like I mentioned we have two centers, one in Yishun and one in Topayo. So before I uh, when I started this diet, right, when I took on this diet, this this challenge, um, the meals were supposed to be sent to our Yishun center, and that was where I was supposed to be based for that month. But because of some challenge, uh, some some changes at work. I was based in Topayo, our other center. And during that week of the 11th, I didn't manage to go back to Yishun Center for lunch or dinner. So a lot of, I missed a good part of the diet. However, still missing a good part of the diet, I still managed to, I still managed to lose that weight, okay? So that's a really good thing. And you see, I only exercised four days a month, four days in that month. <laughs> yeah, so I did not lose weight because of the diet. I didn't lose weight from uh, anything else, just from eating, okay? Another thing that I did was I changed my breakfast. I started to cook oats for breakfast, okay? And the way that I grew up eating oats was oats with condensed milk. That was the way that I was brought up. So in my head, I thought that that was the only way to cook oats. Oh, I'm a, a terrible cook. I, I really don't know how to cook. Okay. I don't know how to mix flavors together to get complex, you know, multi, more uh, multi level flavored food. I'm quite straightforward, you know, salt and pepper. That's like my only kind of um, seasoning. Okay. So I, in it, for the first two days, I cooked oats with condensed milk and I thought, oh, that's so unhealthy. It's not very good, huh? Okay, never mind. Let's just try without oats, okay? Let's just cook it without oats first and then, you know, eat it with the nuts and, and the trail mix and let's see what happens, all right? If I don't like it, maybe I just add sugar or honey or I don't know, something. So the first day I cooked uh, oats without condensed milk was actually on the 4th of March. I was like, okay. It's not so terrible. I ate and I was like, hey, you know, not so bad. I like this oats without with trail mix, okay? Yeah, no seasoning. Quite good, huh? Okay, I just ate it. And for the rest of the month, that was how I ate my oats. Until sometime in the mid-month, I, I thought, you know, this is getting quite boring. Let's try savory oats instead. So sometimes I'd have savory oats, um, like porridge, okay? It's just oats with uh uh with mushrooms or corn, or, you know, something that's in the fridge. So some of the things that, are, some of the changes that I noticed in my body towards the mid of the month was coffee, cravings, the taste of food, and, you know, like these things. So I started with three cups of coffee sometimes on, on certain days, lah, okay? So if, if you see, you know, I don't get a lot of sleep. Yeah, and so I, I really depended on coffee a lot to function at work. So sometimes I would have three cups of coffee, but then I realized I started to, to be able to function quite well with no coffee. I wasn't lethargic. I wasn't tired. You know, I was feeling really good. And when I did have coffee, the coffee that I have is not particularly strong like espresso. Okay, I have things like Nanyang coffee. I'm very sure most of us know what's Nanyang coffee, right? So I had Nanyang coffee and I realized whenever I had coffee, it really felt like a drug. Okay, 
And I could literally feel the coffee coursing through my body, racing into my brain, and how it was a stimulant in my body. I could feel it. For the first time in my life, I could feel coffee coursing through my body. And it's not even strong coffee. Okay. And in during this diet, I felt that I didn't have any more cravings for junk food. I actually listened to my body for cravings. There were certain days that, you know, I could feel like, yeah, I, I feel like having chips. I feel like having potato chips. I feel like having like, you know, bubble tea. I feel like having you know, certain things. But I would stop for a while and I would just listen. Listen to what my brain was saying. Listen to my stomach. And I, I had this mindfulness to what my body was telling me instead of, you know, just what my tongue had craving for. And I realized, hey, you know, I didn't have this craving anymore. I was craving for something savory. I was craving for something sweet. I wasn't craving for potato chips. I wasn't craving for bubble tea or chocolates. These are just my, these are my regular go-tos. So whenever I felt like I had cravings, I would drink water. I would snack on things like trail mix. I would snack on um, carrots and cucumber. Okay, those were the things that I would start um, start snacking on. Okay, and I also realized that vegetables have their unique taste, and I was very accepting of it. Okay, because my colleague said, you know, carrots taste like carrots, corn tastes like corn, right? You know, things taste the way they are supposed to taste, and it's it's not like what I would call green on green. Vegetables don't always taste green. I think a lot of us know what that means, right? When the food tastes very green. Okay, it's, it's that raw taste from uh, certain green vegetables, like the bitterness of, of the, the vegetables. Okay, I didn't even want to eat eggs or mock meat anymore. Yeah, I, I just felt that the, the processed food was not doing a lot of good for my body. Okay, I think it was very taxing on me. Okay, another thing was, you know, I, was, I wasn't so fussy about food anymore. I was more accepting of vegetables that I didn't like, like capsicum and brinjal. Like right now, I can very openly say the only type of capsicum I don't like to eat is green capsicum because the taste is just very strong. And for brinjal, I would accept it if, you know, there isn't the skin. I think at the end of it, it's just that, that mixture of the texture that I could not that I couldn't tolerate. It's not the taste of it. But you know, through this diet, it made me realize that it's just the texture that I wasn't ready to accept. Okay, right now I'm a little bit better. I think at the end of it is about how the food is presented in front of me. Okay, in general, I have um, eczema on the joints of my body. And um, the triggers for this eczema, I realized was is stress, um, the lack of sleep and insufficient water. So over this one month, I realized that I had very a fewer eczema flares, even though I was very, very stressed during this month because um, we had licensing. Our preschool has to go for licensing every two years. So we renew the license every two years. It is not just a matter of um, applying for the license and we get it. Okay, we, somebody, um, an officer will come and check on the center, like check on the documentation, check on the operations. And, you know, there are many factors to check on us. So it just happens that this month was licensing month. And uh, it, during, this, during this period where you see there's the big blank, right? Um, between the 11th to the 17th, these were days that uh, was leading up to the day that the licensing officer was going to come. So I realized I had fewer eczema flare-ups and uh, the recovery was faster. So before the diet, my eczema would last between five to seven days before starting to subside. Now, it during, sorry, during this, uh, during this month of 
the healthy 21 day challenge, right? Um, it only lasted for five days, meaning from start to finish, it was only five days. And uh, it wasn't as bad. The flare-ups would not be as severe. And I didn't need to, to do anything extra to for the for the flare-ups to, to subside on their own. And I realized that I had better gut health. Um, I was less constipated. You know, I would go, I was able to go to the toilet more regularly. Now I've been vegetarian for very many years, since 2012, I think. Yeah, since 2012. So it's been 10, 11 years since I've been a vegetarian, but I would still be constipated. However, during this month, you know, my gut health was a lot better. And lastly, I realized that I didn't go into food coma so often. Okay, in the food coma is where, you know, you feel a lot of lethargy after meals and you, you, know, you want to take a nap, right? So I wasn't as, as tired, even though I was eating so much food. This amount of food to me was just a lot more than uh, what I usually take. Okay, so this is my support my motivation, the four of them. So during this round of the healthy 21 day diet, right? It was just the five of us from preschool. Okay, it used to be seven or eight of us, but eight of them, them, not us, eight of them. Because this is the first time I'm taking this, taking up this challenge. But prior, um, a lot more of my colleagues have, uh, have taken on this diet. So first of all, we have Miss Connie. She is really my pillar of support she's the she's the colleague that sits beside me and the one who puts the food in front of me and says it's time to eat so I'm very grateful that I have her okay and then I have Miss Lim she's the principal of the Yishun Center she's also my motivating factor because she's the one who tells me yeah you know this vegetable very nice huh the day they today the way that they cook the protein is very good they have scrambled to tofu instead of egg. Miss Lim is a vegan. So, you know, like when looking at her enjoy the food makes me enjoy the food as well. And then we have Miss Gan Wen Shan and Miss Ao Fong Yi. These are two Chinese uh, teachers. Okay, Miss Gan, she's a health, very health conscious teacher. She took on this diet because the first time uh, she took on the diet this time round because the first time she met, she lose a lot of weight, really a lot. She went from maybe like a size, med a size medium to a size small. Okay, she lost a lot of weight. So looking at her was a very big motivating factor. And then we have Miss Ao Fong Yi. She is also one of, uh, uh, one of the, the teachers that um, lost a lot of weight during this challenge, okay? So let me share with you what they have said. Okay, so I asked them a few t a few uh, questions, you know, because I, I really needed their help in terms of the sharing for our friends who don't read Chinese. Okay, Miss Connie, she says she took on this diet because she wants to be, uh, be healthier and she wants to know more about this whole food, plant-based diet. And she wants to eat a clean diet. She wants to eat it right. She wants to be a, a healthier vegetarian. Okay. And some of the changes that she noticed about her body was that she realized she had more clarity of the mind. She was very aware. You know, she didn't feel like uh, she was groggy or, you know, muddled most of the time. And her, she really felt lighter. Okay. And she would definitely recommend this diet to her friends again because it's really good. And she can, it's as if she has found the way to eat healthy again. Okay. And for Miss Ao, this is the second time she's taking on this diet. She realized that the food is the this the food this time round is more delicious and it's more flavorful. Okay. She she anticipates, she anticipates every single time. That she opens this opens the, the 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 meal box, she's full of anticipation, and uh she she wants to see what is in the 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 meal the the well, I call it a lunch box okay, even though there's it's for lunch and dinner. And then uh she she wants to see 
she always, she's full of anticipation as to what is in the 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 lunchbox uh and you know this time she uh she not only uh ate right she also exercised and even though she lo only lost 1.5 kilos um her fat has actually gone down from 35% to 33% which is you know quite a big deal actually okay and she believes that if she can exercise and diet together and you know have very good uh lifestyle you know she can lose a lot more weight and become healthier and on top of that you know she not she whenever she opens the lunch box she realizes it's not just her it's just not just a feast to her sense of sight, but also the sense of smell. And, you know, she's just full of positive emotions when it comes to wanting to eat, okay? She's like, oh, you know, this meal, let's just enjoy this meal in peace. Because um, I'm not sure if all uh, many of you notice when we eat, right? Like, especially of all of us in the in preschool, when we eat, we are either sitting in front of the computer or we have to, you know, uh, still supervise the children when we eat. So eating in peace is actually a very big deal, okay? Yeah, so we can actually look at the food and enjoy and savor every mouthful. So that was what she was, what Miss Ao was. Um, she treated herself when she ate her, her lunch and her dinner. She said, let us let us eat in peace and really enjoy this food because of all the effort that has been put into preparing this delicious meal. Okay. And then she real and um she hopes that there will be countless healthy twins. She can embark on countless 21 day diets, a 21 day health healthy 21 day challenges because this is something that she really enjoys. She wants to thank the, the people behind this healthy 21 day challenge team as well. Okay, now next, we also have Miss Gan sharing. Okay, she says, initially she thought, okay, this healthy 21 day challenge, uh, okay, I, I think I can. She has looked at what others have uh, shared about this healthy 21 day challenge before. And she says, oh, you know, I can cook all this, you know. It just looks like it's blanched vegetables. It looks like it's blanched, you know, this. It's not so difficult to make. I think I can do it on my own. And then on top of that, we are very grateful to have um, the organizers share the, the recipe for all these different types of food, okay? So she initially, Ms. Gan thought that, okay, I can cook on my own, but she said, a bit lazy huh, to have to prepare so many different things. Okay, never mind. Let's just take on this challenge, okay? And she wants to, and the main reason why she wants to take on this diet is because she wants to be healthier and she wants to detox. During this diet, she felt that she didn't feed, uh, she she the way that her body was feeling was not so lethargic she felt a lot lighter and you know not she felt like her 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 digestive system was not so taxed and she would definitely uh, recommend this diet to her friends because it's not just healthy but it's also a good way to detox and for miss lim she says that you know she wanted to try on this diet because uh she wanted to know whether she was able to adapt okay to to eating healthy okay and uh some of the changes that she uh she noticed about herself during this during the period of this 21 days was that she can taste food for what it is and she's very satisfied with what is presented in front of her and she feels very good okay and she feels like like i said like many of us have mentioned, she felt lighter, she felt that she had a clearer mind and should definitely uh, recommend this diet to many people because it is healthy. Okay, and to conclude, some of the things, some of the changes that I have made with after this 21 days is my breakfast. Okay, so I live on my own and breakfast is really something that, you know, is very difficult for me because I used to eat bread. But after I started living on my own, uh, yeah, bread is not my friend because I realized I have to buy, I, I take a long time to, to finish the bread and, you know, I, I end up tossing most of it away. So now I eat mainly oats and trail mix when I'm tired of oats, um, when I'm tired of, of 
of sweet oats, I do savory oats. So I do it with mushrooms or you know vegetables or something else that I have in the fridge. Okay. Uh, uh, I snack on trail mix with a lot more or dried fruit. So I like I buy naturally dried fruit. Um, I add a lot more fruit into my diet. Okay, so that's really good. I started eat cooking lunch on my own. Uh, lunch is prepared for us in school. So you know I'm very blessed that the cooks in my school in in the schools have uh, are really good cooks. The the food that they prepare is so delicious. I'm so spoiled by by the cooks. Really so spoiled. That's why I it's a challenge for me to cook lunch every day. Um, I don't cook rice. I do quinoa or millet with vegetables with no oil or little little or no oil. Uh, I do seasoning. I use um, the cabbage seasoning that you know we have in city. Okay, I use that. Uh, that's the main seasoning that I use. I use it on everything. It's my go-to. Or I use the curry powder uh, that we have as well. So, you know, that's the seasoning that I use. Okay, so I bring my own lunch to school every day since the, the end of the Healthy 21 Day Challenge. Okay, and the, for coffee, I limit myself to one cup a day only, if not no coffee at all. So that's, uh, that's one of the big changes from three cups to one or no, that's really good. Okay, and um, I do very simple recipes that I cook in the morning and the, to bring to school or I do meal prep and then I bring it to school. Um, I don't do simple cups anymore. I realize that simple cups like bread, white rice, sugar, uh, sweet drinks, desserts, these cause these cause a lot of um, food coma. So if on one particular day I decide to be nice to myself and I have a dessert, oh, it's not nice to myself. <laughs> it's nice to my tongue, but not nice to my body because it really kicks me. It only th it really throws me into a food coma, and I feel terrible. I feel so tired. I want to take a nap. I have never felt like this before the, before the diet. But you know, I think it's a good detox for me. So it it, it made me more uh, aware of what I put in my mouth. All right. So and then I don't do snacks anymore. Okay, I don't do unhealthy snacks. <laughs> okay, don't do unhealthy snacks. I still snack, but not a, a bit healthier. Um, I exercise. I try to exercise at least two times a day. Uh, sorry, two times a week, if not three. And, uh, you know, 15 minutes of exercise is nothing, is better than nothing. Okay? And the exercise that I do is uh, cardio. All right. So I stand in front of the TV and I follow YouTube videos. I don't do complex things. And I don't, I don't do running. I have poor joints. So I don't do running. Yeah. I do other types of cardio exercises. And I started using a tracker because I realized from the tracker, right, it really helped to put all these different um, elements of my of my life together okay you can do a very simple tracker like you know you're very digitally uh, savvy then you can put it or, on your phone okay but I enjoy using paper because um, yeah it's it's me time okay it's my me time every day all right so I would say that this healthy 21 day challenge is a really a good way to let your body reset from a very high fat, high sugar diet. You know, no such thing as food coma before this unless I eat an insane amount of food. Um, I managed to be more mindful about my body after these 21 days. And I realized I reset my body to, you know, a, a much better state after these 21 days. Okay, so if you ever have the chance, I encourage you to just challenge yourself. It's only 21 days, only. Like challenge us, I challenge you, uh, no, I encourage you to take on this challenge and then, uh, you know, feel the differences for yourself. Thank you very much for listening to my sharing. Thank you so much.